Hey folks, so now that we've talked a bit about free body diagrams and how forces interact with each other, I'm going to take a quick second to look at a few very specific types of forces. Um, the first of them being friction. Now friction is the reason that uh, I can walk anywhere on the ground. Because of friction, it can propel me forward. Friction's also the reason I can stop walking anytime I want. So friction is my friend. Thanks, friction. So what is it? Uh, it's basically a force that resists the movement of objects when they're in contact with one another. Um, so think about any sort of object resting on a surface as it's sliding or attempting to slide. Friction is what tries to push back the other way to stop it. Um, and the force of friction is always, always, always parallel to the surface that the object is resting on. So, if I've got a flat surface, and I'm trying to push an object to the right, then friction, curmudgeonly old friction, is trying to push back to the left. Conversely, if I try to push the object to the left on a flat surface, then friction tries to push back to the right. It's very contrary that way. Um, I like to think of this as sort of a, a sassy force. Just if you're trying to do one thing, it is trying to do the exact opposite, and you can't tell it otherwise. Now, if I'm on a ramp instead, friction would have some X and Y components, trying to prevent it from sliding down the ramp. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Now, there are actually two different types of friction. One's called static, and one's called kinetic. Now, in static friction, um, there's an object at rest, and it tries to stop the object from even getting started moving. Uh, think about if you've got, like, a massive dresser, and for some reason you want it on the other side of the room where it is. Um, I can draw a little free body diagram of that dresser. And before you touch it, all that's acting on it is a downward force of gravity and an upward normal force. And that's that. But if you ever have any experience where you're coming up and you're trying to give it a really good push, I would add FP, let's say, to the right. Sometimes, no matter how hard you push, this dresser's not budging. And you have static friction to thank for that. So even though you can't see it, it's not moving, you're clearly applying a force to the right, and if it's not moving and not accelerating, then there's got to be a force to the left. That is static friction. Right? Now, if you do manage to get it sliding, and you push it at a constant velocity across the floor, if you let go, that thing's going to stop uh, sliding. So you have to continuously apply a force to the right to keep it going at a constant velocity. But that doesn't make sense because F equals MA. And if I'm going at a constant velocity, then my acceleration is zero. And if my acceleration is zero, then my net force is zero. But I've got a force to the right. So there's got to be a balancing force to the left, and that's kinetic friction. So it's already moving. I've got a velocity to the right. Um, and kinetic friction is the reason why if you're pushing it and you let go, it'll slide a little bit farther, but your force push will no longer be there. That will cause it to accelerate to the left, and if I've got a velocity to the right and an acceleration to the left, it slows down. So kinetic friction not only resists your push, it also brings it to rest. Uh, any objects that are just sliding without being pushed, kinetic friction is what brings them to rest. So those are the two main types of friction that you have to be aware of. Let's talk kinetic first, because it's a little bit easier. Um, it is a constant force on the object. As long as the object's normal force doesn't change, the force of kinetic friction, once it's already sliding relative to the surface, is going to be a constant value. A couple of factors that determine what the value of the force will be is the types of surfaces rubbing together. If I rub my hand on my desk, then I feel a certain amount of friction. But if I run over to the ice skating rink and I rub my hand along the ice, I'll feel a little bit less friction, even though my hand is still my hand. 
Similarly, if I rub my hand on my desk, okay, I still get that um, force of friction. But if I take like a porcupine, throw it upside down and rub its needles across the desk, I would get a different force of friction, even though it's the same desk. So it matters not only what the object is, but also the surface that it's rubbing on, both of them together. Um, and the normal force also matters between the surface and the object. Think of it this way. The harder I push down on my desk, the harder the desk pushes up on me. And that's a normal force, the desk pushing up on me. So give this a shot. Put your hand on some sort of a surface right now and just lightly drag it across the surface and feel the friction. Now put your hand and press down really hard and try to drag it across the surface. You feel that force of friction increase. And the only difference is not the two surfaces rubbing together, it's the normal force. So the higher the normal force, the higher the force of friction. Now, speaking of those two types of surfaces, whether it's my hand and desk, porcupine and desk, or my hand and ice, um, there's a certain coefficient of kinetic friction. It's denoted by the Greek letter mu, which kind of looks sort of like an M except with a very long initial tail, um, and mu sub k for kinetic friction. Mu sub k is just a coefficient. It means it doesn't have any units. And you're going to find it to be something between 0 and 1, almost always. Um, so it's a unitless coefficient between 0 and 1. The higher the coefficient, the closer it is to 1, the greater the force of kinetic friction is going to be. So I would have a bigger coefficient of kinetic friction between my hand and my desk than between my hand and ice and I'd probably have an even bigger coefficient of friction between porcupine and desk. Um, so a bit about kinetic friction. Again, kinetic friction, the definition of the word kinetic, just means movement, motion. So this only works if the object has some velocity relative to the surface that it's sitting on. And I can find the value of that force of friction, of kinetic friction, as the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So the higher the coefficient, the rougher my surface is, um, the higher the force of kinetic friction will be. And the higher the normal force, the more that the surface is pushing up on the object, the more that the force of kinetic friction will be. All right, that's not too bad. Like I said, it's always a constant value. So as long as the normal force and the two surfaces don't change, kinetic friction will be a constant value. So if I push harder than the force of kinetic friction, that's how I speed stuff up as it's sliding. If I push at exactly the force of kinetic friction, that's how I push it at a constant rate. And if I push it at less than the force of kinetic friction, or not at all, that's how things slow down as they're sliding. So that's not too bad. Now static friction is a little bit different. Here's how I like to imagine it. Um, think of two brothers, and they're both knights. And we'll ignore my horrible drawing. These are knight helmets. Um, but I got two brothers here, one labeled K and one labeled S, believe it or not, for kinetic and static. And these are the friction brothers. Now, they only fight one at a time. Uh, if one is defeated, the other one will rush in. But they don't try to fight at once. So static friction is pushing against a doorway. They're defending a castle against attackers. Ooh, better yet, they're defending against evil orcs. Rawr. As the orc pushes against the door trying to get in, static friction pushes with the exact same force. Static friction doesn't push with more because then he risks the door swinging open the other way, and that's not good either. And static friction doesn't push with less because then he risks the orc pushing through and getting in. So static friction always pushes with the same force um, as whatever is trying to get an object to move. Right? So he could push with a really small force, like let's say the orc is making a half-hearted effort to get in and just sort of gently pushing on the door, static friction will gently push back with the same amount and the door won't move. Well, the orc starts to get a little bit more desperate, so he pushes a little bit harder. Static friction pushes back a little bit harder as well. 
at the exact same time. Then the orc starts feeling really frustrated. He pushes fairly hard. Static friction pushes back fairly hard as well. Finally, the orc musters all the strength he can, and he pushes really, really, really hard, and static friction can no longer match it. Static friction has reached his maximum push value. He gets overwhelmed, the door swings open, and the orc comes running in. The poor static friction brother has been defeated and is just lying on the ground right now. Now it's up to kinetic friction to push back. Now kinetic friction only has one value, and that is on. So he always pushes with the exact same force. If the orc pushes with a harder force, then he'll slide backwards. Or, or, or the orc will continue sliding in the direction he wants to go. But if the orc pushes with less force, then eventually he'll be slowed down and stopped and defeated. Then the brothers will get back up again and defend the door just like they used to. So only one happens at a time. Static friction tries to prevent the object from sliding in the first place and can push back with a range of values, anything from zero to some maximum value. Once that maximum value has been exceeded, static friction fails and the object begins to slide, the object begins to move. That's when kinetic friction pushes back and tries to stop it. And that's how the two knights, the Friction Brothers, try to keep their castle safe. So that range of values for static friction, again, is anything from zero. Think back to the dresser. If you don't push the dresser at all, then the force of friction is zero. All right, cool. If you push the dresser with one newton of force, barely anything, then friction will push back with one newton of force and the dresser's not going to budge. If you push with two newtons of force, still generally not enough to do anything, static friction will push back with two newtons of force. Until you end up finally finding that magical value where static friction can no longer push back, then the dresser will begin to slide. Try it with literally any object. I've got my mug sitting on my table right here with me now. If I give it a little push, I gotta apply a certain amount of force before I start my mug sliding. So that's static friction. Um, the maximum value of static friction is the coefficient of static friction, mu sub s. Uh, mu again being that same Greek letter, but this time a subscript of s, times the normal force. So again, the force of kinetic friction always equals just one value, but it only exists when an object is sliding. That's mu sub k times the normal force. Static friction can be a range of values anywhere from zero to one newton to three newtons all the way up to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. And that sort of makes sense. The heavier an object is, the greater the normal force from the floor, the more difficult it is to push across the floor. Um, cool. One last little thing to know about this. Um, between any two surfaces, always and forever, the coefficient of static friction will actually be greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. This means that static friction is technically stronger than his brother kinetic friction. The force has to be greater for static friction um, than kinetic friction. Basically, the way this makes sense to me is it's more difficult to get something to start sliding than it is to keep it going. Um, a lot of times when I'm pushing something really, really heavy, I have to have someone help me get it started, but once it started sliding, I can maintain it myself. And that's because the force of kinetic friction is actually less than the force of static friction. The last little thing I want to point out is on this little image that I have of a boy pushing up against a doorway. Um, the URL of the website actually involves boy pushing something heavy, and I just find that amusing, and I had to share my amusement with you. So, come in, ask any friction-related questions you've got, and I will see you all later.